somebody say amen? amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Yeah, and y'all believe God is good. Yeah. God is good. Yeah. God is wonderful. Yeah. God is awesome. Yeah. And he has a beautiful presence. You know, we can be in the presence of the Lord at, at any time. 24-7, 365 days out of the year. We got access to the peace of God in his presence. We got access to the joy of God. Yeah. We got access to healing. We got access to deliverance. But the best is salvation. A better place on the other side. How many of y'all want to get to that better place? I know I do. Well, I want to welcome everybody today in the sanctuary, those uh, listening on Rialto TV, those across the internet, to the Greater Faith Grace Bible Church where Pastor Harry B. Bratton is the pastor. I want to welcome you to God's presence. Amen. It's good to be in his presence. Amen. Oh, when we were lost in our sins, we didn't realize the awesome presence of God. We called on everybody except the Lord. But when we got saved, we came into the Lord's presence. That's when we started to live. I said, that's when we started to live. We got something that the world didn't give us, and the world can't take it away. Amen. God is, he's just good. And you know, you can experience the Lord for yourself. When you have a personal experience with God, you don't have to rely on what other people tell you. Or somebody might tell you something wrong. But if you have, get, have you ever gotten down on your knees and say, Lord, speak to me, deal with me, help me, enlighten my eyes, give me some guidance, give me some help, God will do it. I said, if you get together with God and just ask him to help you, he will. You can ask that to a human being and you may get up, you may not, but God always helps us. Everybody. I said everybody. God's him. And it's good to be in the church this morning. You know better place I want to be is the church. Because God makes his presence known especially in the church. Not the only way God can meet you in your bedroom. He meets you in the bathroom. In your secret closet. But how many of y'all got a choir to come in the secret closet? Yeah. Have you got other people come pray for you in your secret closet? But but the Lord is here in the church and he especially blesses through his church. But we're going to have a good time today in the Lord. We're going, we're going to worship him. The Bible says God is seeking worshipers. I mean, we don't need to be stingy with our time, but we need to worship the Lord. The Lord will bless you if you worship him. I said he'll bless you if you worship him. Look at it this way. We spend nine hours on a job. We give the man nine hours. After nine hours, the boss going to bless us. We got something in our pockets. We can buy a little food for something. So God said if you worship me, I'll bless you. I'll bless you for getting down on your knees when you could have been on your cell phone, talking to somebody else. You could have been watching a program. But you took your time out to get down on your knees in fellowship with me. And you took time out to read my word and hear what I have to say. God will bless you when you worship him. And you serve him. You should have a song. It pays to serve Jesus. I said it pays to serve Jesus. And basically the only people who don't believe that 
as the folks who want to live their own life. But you know, if you live your own life without the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, when you die, what hope do you have? Not at all. But if you have confessed with your mouth, I said confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised up Jesus Christ from the dead. You got God's promise. He said, you shall be saved. You shall be saved. That means after you leave here and get to heaven, you ain't got to worry about where am I going to get the rent money from. You don't have no more worries. No more worries. It will be better then as it was in the Garden of Eden before man has sinned. The Lord has some mansions prepared for us. But you know, we know God is good. And if we really know God is good, we got to tell somebody else. I said, we got to tell somebody else. Why? Because everybody may not think God is good. Just like you have a soul to be saved, the person who don't know Jesus has a soul to be saved also. Somebody on your job don't know Jesus. Somebody in your neighborhood don't know Jesus. You've got work to do. Maybe somebody at the 99 cent store, you don't know from Adam and Eve, but the Lord said, say something to that person. Or give them a gospel track. They need to know Jesus. And you know one thing? God doesn't, you don't see God around here walking around, do you? God works through his believers. That's not the only way he works, but he works through his believers. So tell somebody about Jesus. Our mission, connecting people to our Lord Jesus is up there on the wall, confirming their faith and commission them to God's ministry. If we are a Christian, that is our work. Connecting people to the Lord Jesus. You might have a nine to five job, but your super job, your ultimate job is connecting people to Jesus Christ the Lord. Getting them ready for that great getting up morning. So they too can hear God's voice say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. We're going to take a few minutes to say hello to somebody, give somebody a hug, give somebody a kiss, give somebody a word to God. Just a few minutes of fellowship. Amen. She's not here. She wasn't here at the end. And you guys really touched me. I just wanted to acknowledge her uh, this morning because she's a living testimony. It's one thing to have a testimony when you're speaking to someone. Remember Lazarus? And Jesus, that last scene when he was there with Martha and Mary, and you know, Lazarus was there too. And he didn't say anything, but when he looked at him, he was a testimony. I'd like my wife to just raise her hand for a minute. She's the one that almost went into glory. The Lord brought her back for a reason. And when you look at her, just say, she's a living testimony. And some of you guys have a living testimony too. And she shares that testimony. We were at a birthday uh, party last night. And we were having fun. I'm sitting over there thinking, oh, let's have fun. And she's over there. Can I, I have a testimony, everybody. I'm like, oh, Hallelujah. this is supposed to be a birthday present party, baby. I, I want to share my testimony with everybody in this room, she says. And she got up and gave a beautiful testimony about how the Lord had healed her from the ADM surgery. And so I just want her to raise her hand, raise her hand, baby, raise your hand so everybody will know who you are. Is she beautiful? Is she beautiful? I'm a lucky man, huh? I'm a blessed man. Okay, let me get on with this. Okay, let me get back to what I'm doing here. Jesus is the answer for this world today. Uh,
answer, you know, but he's the only answer. And you may have some questions in your mind about that. You may even have some discouragement and some peace that you just can't find. But if you look to Jesus, he's the answer for your issue situation, maybe a marital problem, maybe you lost your job.
Thank you. 
to out that the man of God is going to preach at. We thank you, Sister Cher, for that solo. Preparing us for God's word. Uh, man of the hour, Pastor January is a member of the Greater Faith Grace Bible Church. He's a man of God. He's a man of God. He's going to come and say, thus says the Lord. And we're going to ask him also to extend the invitation of discipleship. Uh, after he preaches the word, open up your hearts and receive him. And remember the word of God is designed to bring people to Jesus. Without any further words, David January is going to come to Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. Yeah. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, yeah. and his truth endureth unto all generations. Somebody ought to say, Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we have come into this place of worship to say thank you for all of your bountiful blessings that you have so graciously bestowed upon us. Not because we've been so good, but because you're a good God. You look beyond our faults, you see our needs, and you continue to bless us in spite of us. For that, we come saying thank you. We come into this place, oh God, to worship you in spirit and in truth. So now, Spirit of the Lord God, breathe afresh on us. Move in a mighty way. Now this is your servant's prayer and I ask it in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ our Lord and we the saints of God said together, Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. We honor and we esteem my brother, my pastor, my friend, Pastor Harry Lee Bratton. And somebody want to say amen. 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 The pastor of this great fellowship. Amen. To uh, Reverend Dingle. Amen. And to all of the officers and members of the Greater Faith Grace Bible Church of Rialto, California. Amen. amen. Grace and peace be unto you. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Oh, you missed that. Grace. God's unmerited favor. Amen. How many of you were graced this morning? Amen. Amen. Grace and peace. A oh, I wish I had somebody in the house. His grace and his peace. Peace that passes understanding. Peace in the midst of confusion. Peace, the peace of God. Amen. Amen. We greet you in the grace and the peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 What a joy and privilege it is to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. To be back home. Amen. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Last time I was here, we uh, eulogized uh, a member of the community, amen, and, and uh, we always keep in contact with Pastor. Pastor is my friend and my brother, amen, and we just thank him for this privilege and opportunity to come and to share our convictions of the Christ on today, amen. We pray that you will be edified and that God will be glorified, amen. Amen. I'm just ecstatic and excited, amen, because I have my sugar pie honey bunch with me here today. Amen. Wave your hand, honey. That's my sugar pie honey bunch. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. That's my blessing. Amen, amen. And then not only do I have my sugar pie honey bunch with me, 
but I have a good portion of my family. Amen. All my family members, friends, everybody stand up. Amen. They came. Amen. Amen. We're just happy, 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 happy to see you all. Amen. Till time of the day. Bro, you didn't stand up. That's my big bro right there. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. People don't have to come. Amen. And take time out of their busy schedules to come hear you. Amen. So I'm grateful unto God. Amen. For their presence today. And then I'm grateful for each of you. Amen. Amen. Give yourself a little hand of praise. Amen. All right. Amen. How many of you came to hear a word from the Lord today? Amen. Anybody come to hear a word from the Lord today? Amen. 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 And I come to tell you there is a word from the Lord on today. Amen. Nestled in that eighth chapter of Romans, nestled between that great verse one, you know that verse one, Amen. Verse 1 of the 8th chapter, it says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. Nestled in between that verse, and I, I, I just... Well, I'll just read a little bit of it. It says, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Somebody ought to be shouting right about it. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature, things shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Somebody ought to be shouting right about now, but that's not my text. My text is nestled in between those verses, and it goes like this. My favorite verse, I know you've heard it before, it says this, and we know that all things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. If I had to tag this text with a subject, I just want to talk about the providential care of God. All right. The providential care of God. How many of you have gone through some stuff in your life? Raise your hand if you've gone through some stuff in your life. Yeah. Amen. And you know, stuff comes in two forms. Good stuff and bad stuff. Isn't that right? And when we're going through the bad stuff, we tend to forget about the good. I wish I had somebody. I'm going somewhere with this. Look at the text. Because in the text, there is a great promise in the text. But before we get to the promise, there are some prerequisites to the promise. Amen? Amen. Let's look at it. It begins by saying, and we know. Can I get a witness? And we know. It doesn't say we guess. It doesn't say I think. It says I know. It says we know. And I stopped by to submit to you today, my brothers and sisters, there are some things that we as believers ought to know. Not guess about, amen, not think about, but there are some things that we ought to know. Amen. Number one, you ought to know that you're saved, yes, sanctified, and filled with the Holy I, I wish I had somebody. You ought to know that you're saved, 
sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be what? Saved. I wish I had somebody. You want to know for yourself that you're saved. You want not guess about your salvation. You want to be able to say without a shadow of a doubt, for God I live and for God I... I wish I had somebody. There's some things that you and I ought to know as children of the living God. Amen? Yes, you ought to know who you are, and then you ought to know who you are. I wish I had somebody. Because you're looking at me like you don't know who you are, and then you don't know who you are. I know who I am. I am a child of God. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I wish I had somebody. Do you know who you are? And then I know whose I am. I was born to Emmanuel and birth of January, but listen, that's biological, but spiritually, I belong to the one who hung the stars in the sky. I'm a child of God. There are some things you ought to know. Paul begins by saying, and we know Oh, I wish I had somebody. Come on. What do you know today? Some of you only know gossip. Because you allow your ears to be garbage cans to stuff that has no kingdom significance. You want to ask yourself when people call you up, does this have any kingdom significance? I wish I had, ah, it's kind of quiet in here. Or uh, maybe you've been allowing yourself to be garbage cans. But nowhere in the Bible does God say we are garbage cans, but we are children of the Most High God. Hmm. And we know Paul doesn't deal with any guesswork about who he is and to whom he belongs. My brothers and sisters, we live in a time today when the church of Jesus Christ ought to know in whom we believe and in whom we put our trust in. We ought to know that for a fact. We ought to not be moaning and crying. I wish I had somebody today. Because if you knew who you were and if you know who you were, you wouldn't worry about anything. Fret not thyself because of evil doing. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut off. Yes. Yes. Mm, there's some things you ought to know. Mm. It's mighty quiet in here. I'm going to preach anyhow. Because I know in whom I put my confidence in. I know in whom I trust. My Redeemer liveth. How do you know January? Well, about a year ago, I was in the hospital. I wish I had somebody. Anybody here been in the hospital besides me? Uh, but while I was in the hospital, the doctor came to my room early in the morning, took me off my medication. We argued with him, but he took me off the medication anyway. My wife went downstairs to get a cup of coffee. I got up out of the bed to go to the restroom. Next thing I know, I was gone. My wife came back. I was gone. Oh, you don't know like I know. Not only once they brought me back. And I went out again. They went out into the hallway and told my wife, well, uh, there's nothing else we can do. What do you want us to do? My wife, who was in the hallway praying, told them, go back in and do what you got to do because I'm going to stay out here and do what I got to do. And she got a word through the Lord. And I came back. And I'm a living testimony. I don't know about you today, but I know that my God lives. I know that the... I know that the prayers of the righteous avail much. I don't know if you know that, but I know that for myself. 
My daddy used to say, you better know that you know that you know. It's all right that mama knows. It's all right that daddy knows. But you better know for yourself because you're going to have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. And you're going to have to give an account for your stewardship. Yes, sir. Yes. So some things that you need to know. We're all excited about LeBron being in L.A. We know that. <laughs> Some of them. Yeah. Amen. There's stuff that you know that has no kingdom significance at all. Amen. You know it better than you know you. Yes, sir. But do you know Jesus? Yes, sir. Huh? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the requirement before this, before this promise. And this is an exciting promise. Yes. Glory. Before you can have the promise. There's some things you need to know for yourself. Right. Now, let's look at the other requirement that's here in the text beside knowing some things. It says that the promise is only for certain people. <laughs> I wish I had somebody. You, I, I wish I had somebody because we live in a time, there's a whole lot of church going folk. People that fill up the pew. 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, whatever kind of clock they, but listen, they've embraced Jesus. Huh? But they've never repented and left their sin. And I'm stopped by to tell you, don't wreck yourself before you ruin yourself. There's a whole lot of people that's going to go before Jesus and say, Lord, Lord, Oh, yeah. I paid my tithes. I went to church. Yes. I walked white on Sunday, first Sunday, black, and all that. Uh, oh. I was the bishop, the high potentate of the high order, of yeah. whatever. Yeah. We cast out demons. We did this in your name. We did that in your name. Okay. I wish I had somebody today. And when they get through professing about all of what they did, Jesus is going to tell them, I never knew you. Y'all got real quiet right about that. Oh, how awful it's going to be that you take your last breath and not see Jesus. The Bible says absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But you take your last breath and you don't see Jesus. Oh my God, isn't that going to be a reckoning day? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's some things you need to know, and then you, there's some people that this promise is only set out for. Number one, what does the scripture say? It says that the promise is only for those mm -hmm. mm, who love God. Yes, I like that. Ah, the promise that's in the text. Is only for those that love God. Now there's a lot of folks talking about brother things that they love God. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. And before you get out the door, you gossip in your life. Your minds are on all kind of crazy stuff. I'm going to preach anyhow. It's only the promise. See, it ain't for everybody. I don't care about you coming to church. That, that ain't got nothing to do with it. If you don't have a personal, intimate, and dependent relationship with Jesus Christ, then you just wish it be in vain. To them that love God. How can you love God in whom you haven't seen? Yes, Lord. And hate your brother whom you walk with daily. Oh, I wish, I wish, uh, see, I, I didn't think this message was going to go over, hallelujah, and shout message, but there's a lot of people that talk about how they love God, but you can curse your neighbor, you can push, I wish I had somebody. Come on, come on. Amen. This promise is only to them that love God. Listen to what Jesus said in the 13th chapter of John. He said, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have love one toward another. My brothers and sisters, do you know that? Your 
identity is wrapped up in the love that you have for your fellow man. Paul put it like this, do good to everybody, but especially to them of the household of faith. I wish I had somebody in the house today. I like that, I like that. Amen. The promise is to them that love God. And the evidence of how you love God is demonstrated in how you love one another. And this is the how he put how your love flows. It says you're going to flow in love as you understand how I've loved you. I wish I had somebody. The Bible talks about those who have sinned much and who have been forgiven much will love much. I don't know about you, but I used to be a bad man. Oh, nobody but me, huh? And that's why as I reflect on my life and reflect on God's grace over my life, it causes me to say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. In spite of me, in spite of my situation, in spite of my circumstances, thank you for loving me. To them that love God and the evidence of your love is how you treat one another. Amen. How you deal with one another. I have an old saying that the Lord gave me a long time ago. How many have heard the saying, blood is thicker than water? Amen. How many of you heard of that? Amen. Huh? Amen. But I stop by to submit to you that spirit's thicker than blood. Amen. <laughs> Amen. My, 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 my. Right. Who is my mother? Who is my brother? Who is my sister? But them that do the will of my... I wish I had. Y'all looking at me like you have never heard any of this before. The promise is only to them who love God. And to them who have been called according to his purpose. Oh my God today. Who have been called according to his purpose. Oh my God today. Many are called, but few are chosen. You want to know what the difference is? Many are called. They hear the call, but they don't answer the call. That's why they're not chosen. Thank you, Lord. I wish somebody understood just what I said. You may have been called. A lot of people call. But few are chosen. The chosen are the ones that respond to the call. Yeah. I wish I had somebody. And when you respond to the call, it's according to his purpose for your life. Listen to verse 29. He's calling us not for us to talk about what we do, but to glorify him. He's conforming us. You and I, every day of our life, into the very image of Christ Jesus. Yes. I wish I had somebody today. Y'all looking at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. But I stopped by to tell you, there's a great promise when you know something, when you know that you love him for yourself, when you know that you're called according to his purpose, what's the promise? That all things. Work together for good up to them that love God, to them who are the call according to his purpose. Thank you. Yes, sir. Can I call a witness on the stand? Yes, Can I call a witness on the stand? Yes. Ask Brother Joseph. Joseph? Oh, dreaming Brother Joseph. You know he was the baby boy. Yes. Amen. He, he was the brother that had the coat. Of many colors. He was the one that Jacob really loved. Isn't that right? Yes, he was the dreamer. Yes. Immature. Yes. He told his dream a little too soon. Brothers got ticked off to the highest of ticktivity. <laughs> and oh my God. <laughs> they got jealous. Uh, because he spoke out his dream. Right. Isn't that right? And the brothers. Amen. Collectively got together and said, we're going to get rid of this dreamer. I wish I had somebody. Yes. There's people right now that are hating on you right now because of the dream that God has placed in you. Oh, but I stopped by to tell you, even though you 
got haters, don't worry about the haters. Don't worry about the pit that they put you in. Because God will deliver you out of the pit. And just when you get delivered out of the pit and keep you on the way, you're going to be sold. I wish I had somebody. You're going to be sold into slavery, sold down to Mr. Potiphar's house. Isn't it right? But when, the great, when you know that God's grace is on your life, wherever you go, God's grace goes with you. And favor fell on Potiphar's house. So much so that Potiphar put him in charge of everything in him. I wish I had somebody. Oh, my God, today. You don't understand what I'm talking about. When the grace of God is on your life, you can still be a slave and yet be blessed. I wish I had somebody. Even in the midst of that, no Potiphar's wife. You know Potiphar's wife. Uh huh. She wanted to get up close to him. Come on, lie with me. No, jo Joseph said, No, listen, it's not that I, I can't do it. It, 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 it. It's not that you ain't fine. But if I do it, I'm not only sitting against Potiphar, but I'm sitting against God. And he decided to run. Some of you need to run from some mess that's staring you in the face right now. You need to run and trust. Oh, I wish I had somebody. You need to turn around and run. And she grabbed the people in the coat. She lied on him. Put him, listen, he went from the pit now to the prison. This fellow that had grace of God on him. This fellow that had dreams inside of him. This fellow now wondering, looking out and peering out of the, the jailhouse, wondering, wait a minute now. God, you said you never leave me nor forsake me. Uh, God, wait a minute, where are you? But you know what God puts in you? What God gives you with? If you use the gift, even in the midst of your trial and tribulation, if you use the gift, God will bless you. Did he tell? He told. Oh, y'all don't hear me. You know the story. Yeah. And the fella got out of jail. And when Pharaoh had his dream, and couldn't nobody interpret the dream, the dreamer was remembered. And they went and got old Joseph out of jail. They remembered. Oh, y'all don't hear me today. <laughs> oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In the midst of prison, God can still snatch you out of the prison and now put old brother Joseph in the palace. Listen, from the pit to, to prison to the palace. My God today, what am I trying to say to you? Listen, while he was in the palace, he learned all of the ways of the Egyptian life and had rule over all. He was second in command. Those same brothers, those same haters uh, needed something from Joseph. You know the story, isn't that right? Yes, I'm just going to abbreviate it a little bit. Do you hear what I'm saying? And you know the story. They came. They didn't recognize who he was. You see, my brothers and sisters, when God's hand is on you, sometimes God will hide you behind the veil of his mercy and grace. Yes. Where your enemies and your haters, those that have brutally and deceitfully despised and done wrong to you, I wish I had somebody in the house that knew what I was talking about. Listen, when they discovered who he was, they got word. Haters get word when they really discover who you are. I wish I had a praying church. And then they really got worried when Jacob died. Go read it in the 50th chapter. Joseph now is in the place where he can get back. How many of you have wanted to get back at people that have despitefully used you? People that have talked about you and lied on you? Yeah. Oh, nobody but me, huh? <laughs> nobody but me want to get vengeance. Nobody but me want to hurt. Nobody want to slap snot out of me. Ah, yeah, I said it. Oh, nobody but me. You, you, you don't want to get back at them. That person that lied on you, that person that cheated you out of your money, that person that done you wrong, you don't want to get back. Mm. 
But go read that chapter. They were scared. <laughs> they were worried now. Uh, they were uh, concerned about what might happen to them. Uh, but did you hear what Joseph said? Joseph said, I'm not in the place of God. This is not mine. I, I read somewhere where vengeance belongs to the Lord. Amen. He'll do the repay. Amen. But this is the part I want you to really hear. Joseph said, you mean it for you. Talk it, 
Jesus said they worship me with their lips, but the heart is far from me. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Fully committed. Are we committed to Christ today? Are we committed to Christ today? Committed to his will, his way, by his word? Stop talking about, I think the Bible says. You need to know what the Bible Hallelujah. says. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A lot of people know about Jesus, but you need to know him today. Yes. Isn't that right? Amen. You don't want to, again, I'm, 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 just, I'm just here to tell you what God put on my heart. That he has providence who cares for you. To remind you that God is working behind the scenes even when you can't see him. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Even when you can't try, even when you don't feel him. It doesn't mean that he's not there. Amen. He's taking those rough spots of life. Yes. Those ugly parts of life. We all have got something. Mm -hmm. That was ugly in our life. Amen. Something that just tore us down. Something that just tore our humanity down. But you know God is taking that and putting it in with his grace and mercy. And he's stirring it up. And God, oh, you don't believe me? Y'all looking at me like you don't believe me? Uh, look at the fellow that wrote most of the New Testament. That fellow was a hard, cool man. He went out and killed Christians. But on the road to Damascus, he got knocked down off of his high yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if God can use a Christian killer, yeah, he can use you and me. My brothers and sisters know that his providential care is present in your life, but he's looking for people that love him. Not just with your lips, but with your heart. Be committed. Committed over to him. You know what I'm telling the Lord every day? Lord, I can't, but I know you can. <laughs> I can't love, listen, I can't love my enemies. And don't you lie to yourself and say you can, because you can. But he can through you. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. Listen to this. Jesus gave his life for us. So he can give his life to us. So he can live his life through us. I stopped by to tell somebody today, stop trying and start trusting. Did you hear what I said? Stop trying and start trusting. For when you try, you fail. But when you trust, he succeeds. Yes, Lord. My mm. brothers and sisters, the word of God has been proclaimed. His providential care is available to them that love him, to them who are called according to his purpose. And God's purpose for every single last one of us is that he's conforming you and you and you and you and you and me into the very image of Christ. Amen. What does that really mean? That means that we ought to be day by day more like Jesus. Yes. More loving. And listen, let me correct something. Love is not an emotion. Yes. Love is a word of action. Love is a choice. Amen. Hello, somebody. Hey, I, woo, you feel like that today? Let her cuss you out. You're going to feel a mm, Hello, somebody. Feelings are fickle. You feel like this one minute, and you feel like that the next minute. But when you choose to love, you say, Lord, I choose to love, but I can't love unless I understand how much you love me. Now let that love flow what? Through me to I wish I had somebody. It's a choice. Preach. Now I want 
wherever God spoke to today. Wherever you are, don't be ashamed. Don't worry about who's looking at you. But God spoke into your life about his providential care in your life. You've been only focusing on the bad stuff. And you know something? Most of your life may have been bad. Most of your life may not have been up to what you thought it ought to be. But listen, when God comes into your life, he changes all of that. There's one bit of good that works in all of our mess, and it comes out good. Somebody needed to hear that message today, and if it was you, just stand on your feet. Just stand on your feet. If that message was for you, don't worry about who's looking at you. If the message was for you today, just stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Just stand on your feet. Because see, the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It gets to where nothing else can get. It confirms, it challenges. If the word of God challenges you today, raise your hand. If the word of God challenges you today, just raise your hand. Praise God. Now I pray that it challenges you to change. To look at that passage again. Know some things. Get back in the word of God for yourself. You have a great pastor here, Pastor Bratton. Amen. Oh, somebody ought to say amen. That's my growth. And I know that he teaches the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray that your word will dwell richly in the lives of every person that's open to you right now. I pray, oh God, that it will just grow and germinate, it will challenge, and the power of your word will transform our lives, that we'll be more committed to you, more committed in those tough times to know that you're working everything out for yes, our Lord. Lord. Yes. Oh God, I know that we're challenged. I know that we get frustrated. I know we get angry. Sometimes we're mad at you because you didn't show up when we thought you ought to show up. But Father, help us to realize that you're always there, that you're not a liar. You said you never would forsake us, nor would you leave us. Father, somebody's been worrying about bills and worrying about stuff. Your word says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, through what? Prayer and supplication. Yes, Lord. Make yes, your Lord. request known to God. That's a word for somebody today. Father, bless your people today. Bless, bless, bless Pastor Brad. Bless. bless. Give him trouble and grace and mercies all the way back home. He and his family. We thank you for his ministry here. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for his faithfulness. And I just ask you, Lord, to bless him and keep crowning his head with wisdom and knowledge that he might continue to lead your people to higher heights and deeper depths. Spirit of the Lord God, move upon your people. Now the invitation, my brothers and sisters, if there's any person in or out of the building that's heard the word of God and you not have a personal, intimate, and dependent relationship with Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. Yes, we Lord. invite you to come right now. Hallelujah. Did you hear what I said? It's personal. It's between you and God. It's intimate. God doesn't want anyone or anything between you and Him. And then He wants the relationship to be dependent, where you depend solely on Him. Not your 401k, not your bank account, not your spouse, not your children, but depend on God. 
Is there any person who's in the building that's not saved, that does not have a personal, intimate, independent relationship with Jesus Christ, we bid you to come right now. And then, my brothers and sisters, if you don't have a church home, Greater Faith, Grace Bible Church is a good church. We can grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord. We invite you to come and make this fellowship your church home. If you're without a church. Everybody in the house say, if you're saved, you ought to be shouting amen. Oh, I can't hear that. You ought to shout hallelujah if you're saved. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We've done as the Lord has commanded. Brother David, can I do this? I just, is there somebody, somebody I just sense needs a special word of prayer. I know we prayed earlier. If the Holy Spirit has spoke to you, just come real quick, real quick. I just want to pray with you, pray for you real quick. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? Praise God, young man. Praise God. Praise God. Anyone else? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Anyone else? There's power in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. There's power in prayer. Praise the Lord. Someone else stay. There's somebody else. God speaking to you. Don't be, this is not a time to be ashamed. This is a time, hey, you know what? I don't have it all together. I need prayer. Hallelujah. It's not a time to be ashamed. This, this, we're supposed to be among the saints. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, for these yes, Lord. Lord, yes, Lord. Beckon by your spirit. In the name of Jesus. Whatever the need might be, whatever the concern might be. Father, in the name of Jesus, bless and touch in the name of Jesus. Bless and touch in the name of Jesus. Bless and touch in the name of Jesus. Oh God, today, you do only what you can do. Father, only what you can do in the lives of these of believers, oh God. I believe, oh God, that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above. According to the power that works within us. Now manifest your power in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. And then, Lord, I just lift up my nephew, Darian, as a mother just comes and stands on his behalf right now. In the name of Jesus, each one of these individuals, yes, whatever the need might be. Yes, Lord. And then for that person, Lord, who, who was moved by your spirit but didn't respond to your spirit, touch right now. We thank you for this worship experience today. We thank you for your people. Again, we thank you for this congregation of believers. We ask your blessings now in Jesus' name. And the saints of God all said together, Amen. Amen. Amen.